As the Allied forces liberated various regions of France after the D-Day invasions, they encountered distressing scenes in towns, villages, and cities. The Allied troops and French resistance were met with euphoric scenes as the Germans were pushed back towards Germany. However, amidst the liberation, many Allied soldiers came across a significant number of women who were being punished by the French for their collaboration with the enemy. These women were subjected to brutal punishment and publicly humiliated in shameful displays. Approximately 20,000 women were estimated to have their heads shaved in public spectacles known as the ugly carnivals. These women endured barbaric treatment and suffered greatly for their crime of sleeping with the enemy. The Allies aimed to explore the horrific torture inflicted upon these women who had been involved with the Nazis. As the Germans captured and occupied large areas of different countries, they swiftly settled in and began seeking women to court, exploit, or mistreat. In the occupied lands, many women developed relationships with German soldiers. There seemed to be a trend within the German army at the time, as evidenced by pictures of French girlfriends wearing their boyfriends' uniforms. The allure of Paris was well known to everyone in the military with many Germans believing it to be a city filled with scandalous women catering to their every desire, an enormous brothel of sorts. Conquering soldiers, particularly those with higher ranks, could offer women a promising future. They made promises of marriage and returning to Germany to start a family after the war. Some women took advantage of the lonely German soldiers, while others faced exploitation and mistreatment from soldiers who were all too willing to take advantage. This was especially true for women whose boyfriends and husbands had joined the French army to fight. Certain women fell in love with their German boyfriends and married them, following their husbands across dangerous territories and even joining them inside prison camps. Approximately 200,000 babies with German fathers and French mothers were born in France, and this pattern repeated wherever the German army went. Norway saw the birth of 12,000 such babies, while the Channel Islands had 900 babies born to German fathers, all of whom were registered. However, as the tide of war turned against the Germans, they were pushed back and forced to relinquish territory. The liberators and members of the resistance often resorted to extreme measures to punish women believed to be collaborating with the Germans or having relationships with the enemy. The act of horizontal collaboration, referring to romantic or sexual involvement with German occupational forces after the fall of said lands, led to the horrific ordeal and public punishment of many women. In Norway, Women accused of collaborating in this way faced exile or imprisonment. Children from these relationships were also considered part of the betrayal and were exiled and declared illegitimate. Across various regions, sleeping with the enemy was considered one of the gravest shames and crimes during World War II. In France, a horrifying ordeal awaited many women who were punished to torture and humiliation in public for sleeping with their enemies. Numerous women had their heads publicly shaved, reminiscent of a punishment dating back to the Dark Ages for adultery. This act aimed to shame and seek retribution from the French forces. The scenes that unfolded in French towns were shockingly brutal. Crowds gathered to witness the sadistic punishment inflicted on these women during the ugly carnival. They were often beaten, abused, stripped half-naked and forced to walk the streets while being kicked and hit by the furious crowd. Some women suffered severe injuries, with bloody bodies, while others were covered in tar to further shame them. The women's tormentors drew swastikas on their foreheads or bodies using lipstick or paint, revealing to the whole crowd their supposed crimes. They appeared as hunted animals in the hands of their tormentors. The French rounded up collaborators, cutting off their hair and burning it in huge piles, its stench permeating the air for miles women collaborators were also forced to run the gauntlet, enduring severe beatings. One photographer who witnessed these events described four girls being led through the streets, where he attempted to take a photograph. 
Mistaken for a female soldier capturing them, he experienced a mix of congratulations and abuse, with slaps and spit raining down on the unfortunate girls. Many women were paraded on lorries throughout towns and cities, further displaying their shame to more people. Jack Colville, Churchill's private secretary, witnessed one such procession, observing a dozen miserable women in the back of an open lorry, accompanied by booing and catcalls from the French people. Their heads had been shaved, and they were in tears, hanging their heads in shame. While disgusted by the cruelty, Colvo reflected that the British had not experienced invasion or occupation for nearly 900 years, making them less qualified to judge. Though some men were also shaved for working in German factories, it was primarily women who became the primary scapegoats. Some women were subjected to the ordeal wrongly, as they were falsely accused by others with conflicts or personal grudges, leading them to report to the resistance. Additionally, some of the women who faced humiliation had also been abused by German soldiers. Scenes of public humiliation played out across France, where much of the population had suffered heavily under German occupation. While some Allied soldiers sympathized, they were still shocked by the torture inflicted on these women. French forces executed and shot many women on the spot if they were found in possession of German weapons, without giving them a chance to explain. Fear of collaboration was so intense that even the possibility of these weapons being gathered for the resistance did not spare the women from being shot. There were reports of American soldiers encountering women in German uniforms with snipers or inside towns, and these encounters often led to violent outcomes. There was also a fear in France that any French woman supporting the German military was seen as a threat. For example, female school teachers living alone were forced to accommodate German soldiers. After the war, some of these teachers were punished for being involved with German soldiers, although this was not the case for many of them. For many women, collaborating with the enemy seemed to be the only means of obtaining food for themselves and their children during the occupation. The scenes witnessed during the ugly carnival were among the most shocking of World War II. The violence inflicted on women forced to run the gauntlet, or have their heads shaved sometimes resulted in their deaths. Across France, the conduct of French women with German soldiers was heavily condemned. Their actions were regarded as the ultimate shame and tantamount to treason. The shocking images of French women with shaven heads and branded with swastikas remain haunting reminders of that dark chapter in history.